Well, hello and welcome to none other than lesson 18-2 using similarity criteria, which is actually covered in lesson 18-1. So we learned about the similarity criteria in 18-1, and now we're going to observe the similarity using the similarity criteria in 18-2. So let's look at our learning targets as always. So we are going to show triangles are similar. That's our first learning target. Um, and more than likely, we're going to use that similarity criteria to do that. And then we are going to use similar triangles to solve problems. So the first thing we're going to do is show that triangles are similar. See what happens when we bring out properties and characteristics of triangles that are similar. And then use those properties to solve problems. So as always on your learning target, uh, be sure to rank how well you understand those two learning targets just initially when you read them, you know, on a scale of one to five, five being you feel very comfortable with being able to show triangles are similar after we learn the definition of similar in activity 17. Um, and one, you have no idea how to show triangles are similar. So keep that in mind so that at the end of this lesson, we can go back and hopefully whatever you wrote here and here, those numbers will go up. So we are going to chunk this entire first page of the lesson. So you can actually draw a line right below. So I'm going to ask that you pause the video, work all the way up to, and even read the text before playing through the video. Okay, hopefully you've taken a second, probably a lot of newness in this. Uh, Clarissa is one of the surveyors hired to help determine land boundaries. She needs to find the distance across a ravine, which in this case would be the distance from A to B. She thinks she can use properties of similar triangles to find that distance. So I wanted to call to mind what does it mean for two, in this case, triangles to be similar? Well, corresponding angles congruent and corresponding sides proportional. And you saw that we actually used a proportion for this one. So number one said, which similarity criterion, if any, can be used to show triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEC? So I actually wrote the triangle uh, angle angle similarity criterion, which states if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the two triangles are in fact similar. So you might be wondering, how did I know two angles uh, of one triangle were congruent to two angles of another? Well, first and foremost, these two angles centered around this vertex C have to be congruent because they're called vertical angles. So I know regardless, these two angles both have to be 61 degrees. Well, now that I know that the measure of this angle right here is 61 degrees, I added that to 55 and subtracted that from 180 to find this measure is 64 because the three angles of any triangle have to sum to equal 180 degrees. Well, then I started to notice something else. 61 and 64, when I added those together and subtracted from 180, I found 55. So not only are two angles of these two triangles congruent, but in fact three. But we only need to know two angles because if two angles are congruent, then that third pair of corresponding angles has to be congruent as well. So we have two similar triangles, which means look at item two. The triangles are similar, so the corresponding sides are proportional. So we should be able to write a proportion, solve a proportion to find the distance from A to B. Now, I use some color coding to help you see which sides were actually corresponding. So angle D actually corresponds to angle A. So it's, if you will, it's kind of a rotation here. This point has to go all the way over to A. Angle E being 55 degrees is the same measure as B, so these are actually corresponding as well. So just keep that in mind when writing proportions. So they already had part of the proportion filled out for us. They had 65 here in the first ratio, which is a part of triangle EDC. And then over here in the second ratio, they had what we were looking for in AB. So to finish out the ratio, if I started with 65 from this triangle, I have to find its corresponding side on the other, which would have been 85 meters. So that's what I put below 65. Well, then if I started with triangle EDC 
For the first ratio, I have to go back and start with triangle EDC for the second ratio. So I chose a measurement ED because I knew it corresponded with AB, and that's the goal to find AB. So I used 55 meters from E to D and compared it to what they already gave us AB. And then I use, and you can use other methods, but I use cross multiplying to solve for AB, which tells me to take 65 and multiply by AB, which would be 65 AB. And 55 times 85, which is a gigantic number, 4,675. Did a little division here, divided both sides by 65, and I got approximately, this is the symbol for approximately, 71.9 meters. Now, as always, especially when they give us real world context, be sure to go and make sure that that number makes sense. Does it make sense that this measure is 71.9 meters larger than ED? Absolutely, because triangle ABC is an enlargement of triangle EDC. Now, the method that they're talking about here is known as indirect measurement. And I love highlighting this because this map is used often in land surveyors to find such things as the height of a tree or the distance across the lake, something that you can't typically use a ruler um, or a yardstick to do. And often triangle similarity is used to make indirect measurements. Now let's continue on. We have an example A on the following page. So if you would just pause the video, look through this example, it gives us another look at using triangle similarity to find missing measurements. In this case, we're finding the width of a rock from A to B. But notice how the figure looks. These two triangles, triangle ABE, is actually overlaid by triangle CDE. So they're kind of on top of one another. And so just take a moment to explore this example before playing through. So hopefully you took a second to look over this example. Uh, first and foremost, they showed us how to find some measurements, some distinct measurements of the two different triangles. Um, so if we were given the length from A to E is 84 feet, hopefully we can find the measurement from C to E. Uh, they show us the math here is 48 feet, right? And then the same thing likewise with DE. You know, if the length from B to E was 98, we can find the length from D to E by subtracting 98 and 42, which gives us 56 feet. So now we actually have the three sides of this smaller triangle, CDE, and we have two sides of the larger triangle, triangle ABE. So I thought this was pretty fascinating here. One of the ways we can show two triangles similar is if corresponding sides are in fact proportional. We said on the previous page that if we know two triangles are similar, then corresponding sides are proportional. So we're kind of doing this in reverse. If we can show that corresponding sides are proportional, then the triangles are similar. So they wrote the proportion CE. This segment here corresponds to AE, which makes sense. They're on the same side, uh, if you will, of this larger triangle. And DE, this side, again, of the smaller triangle, corresponds to BE of the larger triangle. And so what they did was they replaced the values in the proportion and did cross multiplication. Notice there's a question mark here. So what they were really trying to figure out is, are these two ratios equal? And if they are, then the triangles have to be similar. So they plugged in the numbers, did some cross multiplication, 48 times 98, and they wrote that here. I typically write it on the right-hand side. Um, 56 times 84, they did that here, and both of these uh, products give us 4,704. In other words, these two ratios are equal, therefore the corresponding sides are proportional, and that tells us that the two triangles are similar. Another method that you could use is known as the side angle side similarity criterion, which actually wrote it over here. If two sides of one triangle are proportional to two sides of another, we have that in common, right? We know, we just figured it out, that the two corresponding sides are proportional and the corresponding pair of included angles are congruent. Then the two triangles are similar. So why did they say angle E was congruent to itself? Well, both triangles, triangle ABE and triangle CDE, both utilize angle E. And that would be considered the included angle between this side and this one. 
So now that we know that angle E is congruent to itself, it'd be the same measure for both triangles, we can state that the two triangles are similar by the side angle side similarity. So now that we know they're similar, we can actually use a proportion to find AB. That's very important. We have to know that they're similar first before using a proportion to find AB. So we use the proportion to let us know they're similar. And now that we know they're similar, we're going to use another proportion to find AB. So be sure when writing your proportion, you use corresponding sides. So they chose CE compared to AE, which makes sense a length of a side of the smaller triangle compared to the length of a corresponding side of a larger. And then they chose CD, which makes sense, this distance of the smaller triangle compared to AB, the distance of a corresponding side on the larger triangle. They replaced the values with what they knew, did cross multiplication, and found the width of the rock is 94 and a half feet. So just another way to show triangles are similar using this similarity criterion and then find a missing side of similar triangles. Now let's put it to use. We just saw two pretty good examples. One that was already done for us here. Now let's see if we can put that information to use maybe out of a real world context. So if you would, we're going to go and chunk try these A chunk, try these A, and if you would, complete the work over in your mind notes section. So pause the video, complete, try these A before continuing. Okay, so let's take a look. Honestly, two very different problems and the way we're going to approach those, but if you notice, they're very similar to the previous examples we looked at in this lesson. This one more like the example that was given to us on the previous page. So I handled this possibly a little bit different than you would. Um, but our goal is to find CB. So I labeled CB as X, some measurement we didn't know. Well, I had to write a proportion, assuming that these two triangles were similar. Now, how do I know they're similar? Well, they tell us a pair of one pair of angles are congruent and we know that they both share angle C. So we actually have two pairs of congruent angles which is called the angle-angle similarity criterion. So they are similar triangles. So we should be able to write a proportion like we did here. So I said that AC, this side of my much larger triangle, corresponds to BC on the same side of the triangle, but a BC is that, that side of the smaller triangle. So I said these two sides correspond. And obviously I'm trying to find BC, so I probably should use it in my proportion. Well, if I started with the larger triangle, AC, that side, then I need, on the second ratio, I need to write a measurement of a side of the larger triangle. So I use the distance from A to E. And I compare that to its corresponding side, B to D, on the smaller triangle. So I did some little maneuvering here. I said if the distance from B to C was X, then the distance from A to C was 12 plus X, which makes it a little bit more complicated. You might have found another way to do this. I'll tell you, you could actually find the scale factor between these two measurements and approach it that way. You know, how many times bigger is 35 than 20? And see if you can find that same answer that I'm gonna get here. So I replace my segments with their measurements, did cross multiplication, and where it gets a little tricky, is when I multiply 35 times X, I got 35 X, but when I multiply 20 times 12 plus X, notice I show the distributive property here, I have to multiply 20 times both of those terms. So I get 20 times 12, which is 240, 20 times X, which is 20 X. And then I combine like terms by subtracting 20 X. I get 15 X equals 240, divide both sides by 15, and I find that X, my missing measure, is 16. Therefore, the distance from C to B is 16. So I invite you, if there's another method you're approaching, some of you are figuring this out, to use scale factor by all means. Proportions are just one way to solve it. Now B, a slightly different problem, they've tasked us to find X, Y. Now, again, we can't just necessarily assume the two triangles are similar. We have to know that they are. And they tell us one pair of corresponding angles are congruent. And these two angles, although uh, 
They did not tell us they were congruent. The fact that they are vertical angles around vertex Y, they have to be congruent because all vertical angles are congruent. So technically, these two triangles are similar by the angle-angle similarity criteria. So we are allowed to write a proportion to solve for the missing side X, Y, which if you notice, I call lowercase a, just so you're not confused because we already have an X as one of our points in the triangle. So uh, I use some color coding here to help you figure out which sides are similar. So Z, X of the smaller triangle corresponds to R, Q. And then we, if we started with the small triangle and then went to the larger one in the first ratio, for the second ratio, we have to go back to the smaller triangle. So here's our missing link, X, Y. And I said that corresponds to this side, Q, Y, in the larger triangle. I replaced the values with the measurements we knew. Of course, we don't know what X, Y is, so I replaced it with A. And then I performed cross multiplication, just like I did here. Maybe just looks a little bit more simplified. After I cross multiplied, I got 38A equals 660. Divide both sides by 38, and I find that A is approximately 17.4. That's the approximate symbol again. So XY is approximately 17.4. Again, if you're using the method of scale factor, that's really what's at play here. Because all a ratio is, is a comparison of two numbers and how much larger one is the other. And that's what the scale factor is in dilation. So if you're finding these measures in a different method, don't hesitate with that method because it's probably on the right track. The last thing that we're going to complete together, because you notice we are about to be at the 18-2 practice, is the check your understanding. So draw a line right above the practice or simply no, complete the check your understanding before playing through the video. Okay, so you might have found yourself scratching your head a little bit at this one. And even when I look back over it, it almost appears that Jorge did not make a mistake, right? I showed which sides would be considered corresponding. So he compared this side that was 10 to this side that was 12. And then he used this side that was 12 and he corresponded to this side that we're looking for, DA. So he did cross multiplication beautifully. 10 times DA, he put it here. 12 times 12, he put it here. And he found that DA is 14.4. So the math checks out. But what mistake did he make? Well, he didn't figure it out. He forgot to show or even know that the two triangles were similar. So we looked at two criterion already in this lesson, one being the angle-angle similarity criterion and the other being the side-angle side. Well, if you think about it, we don't even know two pairs of sides that would be proportional. We have one pair here, but we don't even have two pairs, so we can't use side-angle side. Well, then you might be thinking, could we use angle-angle? Well, the only pair of angles we know for a fact are congruent is the pair of angles around vertex C, because those are vertical angles, so they have to be congruent. So we only have one pair of angles that we know for a fact have to be congruent. So what makes, mistake did he make? He wasn't able to know if the two triangles were similar and therefore have the right or the ability to even write a proportion. Because if two triangles aren't similar, then corresponding sides aren't proportional. So that's the mistake he missed. And that's why we emphasize that on Try These A, even though they didn't ask for the similarity criterion. So that's the end of Lesson 18-2. I always urge you to go back to the learning targets, reevaluate your understanding, see if you feel a little bit better about those learning targets. And as always, complete the 18-2 practice. Thank you for watching.